Placement targeting for your YouTube ads can be one of the most precise targeting options in Google Ads. I say can be. That's because if you're not fully aware of how placement targeting actually works within the campaign settings, you may think that placement targeting doesn't work at all. Also, your ads can appear on more placements than just YouTube channels and YouTube videos. So in this video, I wanna make sure you understand how the placement targeting actually works and all the options you have to target your video campaigns. With any campaign that we set up within Google Ads, we have to select a campaign goal. Video campaigns in Google Ads are part of every single campaign objective you see with the exception of the app promotion option. And whichever campaign objective you select for your video campaigns, placement targeting will be available in every single one of them. So for this video, I'm just gonna select a campaign without a goals guidance. Of course we want video, and then just to keep it going, I'll select custom video campaign. I'm not gonna go through a campaign setup that's gonna vary depending on your goals and which campaign objective you select. But within the campaign setup, I do wanna focus on one part, and it is an extremely important part of the campaign setup. This is where I see a lot of confusion on accounts that I audit or clients that I consult with YouTube ads on where people think their ads are showing up versus where the ads actually show up. And the first way this can get messed up is through the networks that you're selecting for your targeting options. And yes, this does tie into placement targeting because if we expand this network section, here's everywhere where our YouTube ads can be shown. So if you're running TrueView discovery campaigns, which we have another video on that setup, those ads can appear on just the YouTube search results. Remember, YouTube is the second largest search engine after Google. So tons of people go to YouTube and search for video content that they wanna see and be entertained with. One of the network placements that you can select is just the YouTube search results and you can only do that with TrueView Discovery ads. One of the main benefits of that format. Now the most popular way that people think about YouTube ads is selecting them on specific YouTube channels and pages. And those you can use with both the in-stream and the discovery ad formats. Now if you're not expanding this network section within your campaign settings, most likely you are skipping this checked box underneath YouTube videos that will also show your ads on video partners on the display network. And if I hover over the question information panel, we get more information from Google Ads. This is letting us know that Google has the right to extend the reach of our video ads to specific websites and apps that are part of the Google Display Network. The idea here is to expand your reach, get more eyeballs on your video ads. For further clarification, as you see since I unchecked that YouTube videos box, we cannot select just video partners. So if I recheck it again, the video partners box is also checked. If you choose to show your ads on video partners in the display network, your ads will still also appear on YouTube. The rest of the campaign setup is pretty straightforward, but I had to bring up the section about the networks because it does affect how our placement targeting options will work when creating our campaigns. Scrolling down to the section where we can create our ad group, we can see under the content box, that is where we can search for placements. And as I said in the intro, our ads can appear on more placements than just specific YouTube channels or YouTube videos. So we're gonna go over each of these and show you a few ways that you could research what type of placements you can add for your video campaigns in Google Ads. I'm a big baseball fan, so I'm gonna use baseball for the rest of this video and anyone who's a fan of baseball as my main target audience that I wanna get a video in front of. So it's easy enough for me to just pick a category, Let's do YouTube channels first. And if I have specific placements in mind, I can search for them. If people are a fan of baseball, it makes complete sense for me to wanna to get my video ads on the actual baseball league channels. And of course, if we just keep scrolling, we see a lot of other options that I can choose from. Scrolling back up, underneath each YouTube channel title, we get the number of videos that this channel has, as well as their total number of subscribers. This gives you an initial idea of the type of reach that your video ads can get by using this specific placement targeting. I quickly refreshed after I added a budget to the campaign, so now you can see on the right hand side, we get an idea of available impressions I'm gonna get for this video campaign that has a specific end date. Now if you're doing your research and you're seeing specific channels are relevant, but not every video on that channel makes sense for you to put an ad on. You can go back, possibly X out the keyword that you originally searched, and then we can look at specific YouTube videos. I'm in Milwaukee, I'm a Brewers fan, so let's say I just want my ad on any video related to the Milwaukee Brewers. Now I can go down and research videos that are much more relevant to the tighter audience that I wanna get in front of. Now the beauty of this view, and I can only speak from the data I'm recording this video, is that the videos I'm seeing are fairly recent. A lot of the videos I'm seeing are actually from the game that happened yesterday. And I have seen this happen a lot with certain industries 
or certain themes of videos where the content is constantly updated. So if you think your target audience kind of falls within one of these themes or demographics of the content that you want to target, and possibly you're looking something that's a little bit more evergreen, you may have to do a little bit more digging. Moving on to the next placement targeting option, I'm going to X out my keyword again. We see the newer one to the placement targeting family, and that is video lineups. Unlike most of the other targeting options where we can really research by a lot of keywords, specific phrases, as of right now, video lineups has a set 137 options that we could choose for targeting. And since it is that limited, I'm going to break out of the baseball theme just to show you the types of options that we have. To describe video lineups a little bit more, this newer placement targeting option has really come because of all the YouTube viewership that has shifted to TV devices. That, on top of the fairly recent introduction of YouTube Select, we can now go after specific themes of video content. I mean, it pretty much says it in the name, video lineups. Think of it as how we used to say the TV lineup for this channel. The first option that shows up at the top is popular content worldwide. So if you just want to have brand awareness and you want your videos to be placed on what is trending on YouTube at the time, this is now one of the newer selections that you can add to your video campaigns. As I scroll down, we can see very specific topics that are part of these video lineups, as well as the countries that these lineups belong in. We do see basketball, there's no baseball theme as of yet, but we see a variety of comedy options in different countries. There's video games, home improvement, cooking, some luxury goods, a variety of music in different countries, same thing with news, overall popular content, there's overall sports news, some tech and gadgets, toys, TV dramas, TV show varieties, we got cars, beauty, more cooking, a good amount of music, and more popular content. Now, when I see popular content, I think of getting my video in front of a more engaged user. When you think of videos that are popular at the moment, it could be current events. It could be a video that's going viral that people are talking about or sharing on social media. So what do people do? They go to YouTube so they can watch that video or see the current news channel. So if people want to be engaged with video, this could be another good option for your brand to get in front of that engaged user. So initially, that's a high level view of what we have for video lineups. If you haven't done video campaigns in a while, this could be another option for you to go back and test and see what kind of results you can get compared to whatever current targeting options that you're using for your video campaigns. Now the next three options, websites, apps, and app categories are a way for advertisers to expand their reach with their video campaigns. That being said, these three categories are also where users really have to be careful and monitor where their ads are actually being shown because this is where advertisers can really waste a lot of money when you're choosing specific placements for your YouTube ads targeting. So the first option, websites, we can type in specific URLs or also use keywords and we will see results of websites that are part of Google's display network. I cleared my current targeting option because I want to show something specifically with website targeting for your YouTube ads. If you're doing what I did right here, I just typed in baseball, you're typing in certain keywords, you're seeing a list of website results. It is extremely important that you understand that these are all websites that are part of Google's display network. Now what Google does not tell you is that just because these websites are part of the display network, it does not mean that these websites have video ad placements. This is where I've seen accounts waste a ton of money. So you can see above the selection options, there's a little text that kind of hides there a little bit, but it's still kind of vague. But if you go to the Google Ads help page on targeting options for video ads, they give a little bit more detailed explanation. So they let advertisers know when you add Google Display Network placements, your ad may still run on all eligible locations on YouTube and vice versa. So when you add YouTube placements, your ad may still run in all eligible locations across the Google Display Network. Now, what we've seen before in certain accounts that we first looked at is that some of the accounts were only targeting specific websites. Those websites actually did not have any video ad space or that client was not bidding high enough to be eligible to show up on those specific website placements. What Google does then is they ignore your placement targeting and we'll look at any other safety net targeting options that you have layered onto that specific ad group. So we have seen very specific placement targeting get ignored and then Google just show our video ads on a very broad topic or affinity audience. And that's where we've seen our placement reports actually show us a ton of junk. Another important thing that you have to worry about is if you are using placement targeting only. 
That means your ad group is doing just placement targeting with no other additional layers. If that's the case, Google now tells you if you're targeting placements just on YouTube or you're targeting placements just on the display network, they are now eligible to run on both. That's another lack of control of where our ads are being shown. So yes, this will mean more work reviewing your placement reports, and we're gonna to get to that fairly soon. Clearing those selections out, I'm gonna go back again, remove my keyword, Next, we have apps and app categories. And similar how we search for specific channels, videos, or websites, you can also search for apps that you may wanna have your video on. In my case, I see a lot of very specific baseball apps, but you may wanna to go to these specific app stores and review each of the app placements to see if it's worth having your video on any of these specific apps. The last option is app categories, and there are only 141 specific categories. And then these app categories are broken out specifically by Google Play, the Apple App Store, and then one just for Windows Phone apps. And these are gonna be much higher level categories. We scroll down, we really see nothing very specific. The closest thing for me for baseball would just be overall sports. So most likely in this example, I may think that is too broad, but app categories can really be beneficial, again, for expanding reach. And especially if your goal is really for brand awareness, maybe some product awareness. Maybe before you even started creating your video campaign, you already did your research. You already went and you were finding out specific channels, videos, et cetera, of specifically where you wanted your video ad to be shown. While you're doing that proactive research, start saving all of those URLs because it will be a lot easier to add those placements as targeting options when you're creating your campaign. If we can do this by clicking on the enter multiple placements option, you can literally just take your list of URLs, paste them into the placement field, and depending on how many you have, I only have five just to make it quick, you can then add all the placements that you pasted over to your options. So if I scroll down to the bottom of my options, you can see that this works for specific videos and entire channels. Now within the matter of seconds, you can upload a list of every single placement that you would want to be a part of, and that can make the ad group creation go a lot quicker. I've now jumped to the placements report within Google Ads, and this is really helpful for advertisers to get an understanding of where your ads are being shown. And you can see I have that option selected in the menu. Now up top, right here, when we see specific networks, I have it sorted by YouTube and display, but you can choose just to look at the YouTube network or just the display network. This will give you some information about where your videos are being shown and if the targeting options you have selected are actually showing on the YouTube channels or display placements that make sense for your specific audience. So even if you are choosing just placement only targeting, you'll then get a better understanding of how much control Google is taking for your placement targeting and see if you need to make updates to try to make it either more specific or potentially even expand your reach. This is the Paid Media Pros account and we are running some TrueView discovery ads for ourselves. Most of our ads are running purely just on the YouTube search results, which is why we only see just youtube.com as the placement. But we do see a few other options there like CNN Business, Comedy Central. So what you can do is review your placements and adjust the columns to be whatever is important to your campaign's goals. Maybe you're focused just on views, engagement, a higher view rate. If it is a more action-focused video campaign, maybe you are looking at conversions or view-through conversions. So before you update your targeting, you may want to test out just excluding some specific placements based on this report. And that's easy enough to just highlight a few options. You can click edit, and then you can exclude either from the ad group or the entire campaign campaign. But I also like to use my placement report to see what's working. Again, looking at the metrics in the columns that are important to you, again, the metrics that you feel will help you be successful for the campaign, sometimes you may find out that some of the placements that your videos were on worked out very well. And those weren't placements that you were specifically targeting. Use these metrics that are important to your campaign goals to potentially find new placement options. So for whatever reason, if we saw that CNN business was consistently meeting our expectations of what we consider a successful placement for our video ads, we may consider taking that CNN business and making it a managed placement for our video campaigns. And even if you're running other video campaigns that aren't specific placement targeting campaigns, check out those placements too in your other campaigns. That can also feed you new ideas of new placements you can target if you're seeing consistent quality interactions or conversions coming from those placements. Now, if we're talking about specific placements that we can target, I also want to talk about how we can use specific placement research to also come up with proactive exclusion lists. So if you go up to your tools and settings, under the shared library, we can choose placement exclusion lists. If we create a new one, even before I have my campaign created, I can start proactively looking at placements where I do not want my ads to be shown. A very common one that we see is kids' YouTube channels. You could be targeting the right audience, but that person has given their device to their kids. Unless you're selling children's products, you may not want your ads ever showing on a kid's YouTube channel. 
So we have another video where you can block that out and get a list of about 1500 different channels for you to automatically exclude. But going back to the baseball theme I had earlier, maybe I only want to reach people who are specifically in the mindset of baseball. Even though they could be fans of all the sports, if I'm showing a baseball themed ad, someone who's in the mentality of being interested in baseball at the moment is most likely going to be more interested with what I'm trying to promote. So maybe I want to start proactively excluding channels for other sports. Just by typing in basketball, I get over a thousand YouTube channels. I can start adding those to the mix. No doubt there's going to be a ton of YouTube videos. Maybe I want to block out some of these basketball websites, a ton of basketball apps. You get the point. And I also understand that this category is extremely broad. If you're in a more specific industry, you're not going to have all of these results and it's going to be a lot easier to create your placement exclusion list. But now I can save this list and go back in it. And now I can apply it to any specific YouTube campaign that I want to. And since we now know that our placements can show up on YouTube and display, you can also use this list for your display campaigns too. But if we select done, I've now added those campaigns to this specific exclusion list. So the same way that we can target our videos and look at specific placements, we can do the same thing for our exclusion list. And that'll help you keep your placement targeting as clean as possible even though you're still gonna to have to review your placement reports to make sure that when you launch a new campaign, you get off to the best start as possible. As we can see, no matter how specific we think placement targeting is, it's not perfect. Understand how the campaign settings work in regards to where your ads can actually appear. Add on top of knowing of what you're selecting for your placement targets and how they can actually affect who's actually gonna see those ads, it's gonna make sure the next time you launch a placement targeting ad group or campaign, it's gonna get off to the best start as possible. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you wanna see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.